In this video, we're going to look at how you can enter data into Excel. So one of the things I like to point out is down in this bottom right hand corner, there's a bit of a zoom bar here. So you can scroll in and we're not going to need this whole spreadsheet. So we're just going to zoom in a little closely so we can look at things. So you can enter either text or numbers into your Excel matrix. When you enter text, the text always aligns to the left. After each word, I just tabbed and moved over to the next column. I can also hit enter. Enter or return moves me down and tab moves me over. When you enter numbers, numbers always align to the right. So if I mistype and actually put a O, that gives me the visual clue that I misentered something there. Now, a lowercase O doesn't really look like a zero, but an uppercase O could fool you. But you also have that visual clue that lets you know, hey, something's going wrong. That's supposed to be a number. So in addition to text and numbers, you can also enter things like dates. And notice as I enter dates in a different format, Excel is reading this as different types of information. So if I look up here in what's called my general column, you can see this is automatically reading this as a date, where it's reading that as general. So if you need to change things, you can drop that down. But most of the time, you're going to be OK if you use general. But if something is not formulating correctly, if you're having trouble, that might be a good place to check. So labels or text are usually the descriptive pieces of information. Things like names, months, anytime you're going to have some type of alphabetic character. In that home tab, you can also style all of those. Values are usually raw numbers or dates. You also have formulas. Notice as I type that formula, I'm using the position on the matrix of each of those numbers. And we'll go through more how you can create formulas and calculations later. But all formulas have the basic format of equals, and then your operator, parentheses, where that information is, and then you close that parentheses. So one of the things that can occasionally trip people up is that copy and paste can work differently depending on the type of data you have. So for example, if I copy and paste, notice it moved that formula over. And so it's looking for information in these cells. So if I type it, it's going to create that. Now if I wanted to move this information, instead of just pasting that whole formula, what I want to do is paste the value. So just notice that through that edit menu, you can access different things that you may want to paste. So copy and paste doesn't really work the same as it might in a word program, that type of thing. If something looks wonky, you might want to try a special pasting. Data entry can be sped up by using Excel's autofill features as well. So for example, let's say we were entering attendance by date. So we'll have a series of dates in here. Well, I could go through and type all of them, or I could use autofill. So let's start. So I've got a couple of numbers in there. And so I'm just going to copy them all down. And you can see with autofill, it is copying all of those dates continuously. Let's say that we have text that kind of runs a little bit long. So it's running into column B. 
Well, I can select both of those, Merge and Center, and have that work more as a headline for those hours. Next, let's look at how we can filter and sort information. So you can see we have a series of information here. And what my goal is, I want to sort this by department. So I'm going to click on B1, and I'm going to navigate to my sort and filter. And I want to sort this A to Z. Now, sometimes when you're sorting, that can grab also your sort column. So one thing I do to make sure that it's not going to sort that header column is to just make it a slightly different style. In this case, I've made it bold. I can also choose this entire column to sort. Let's try this, and we're going to sort it Z to A. Now it's going to come up with a warning. And what it's asking me is, do I want to expand the selection? So if I don't expand the selection, meaning it's going to keep each of these rows together, then it's going to start messing up our, our row data. So I'm going to hit Sort, and it kept all that row data correct. You can also find and replace data. So let's say that we misentered all the two inch and need to enter one and a half. So what we're going to do is use our find, and we're going to find this within the entire workbook. And I'm going to search for that exact phrase. And next we're going to replace. And we're going to select replace all. And it says, OK, we've made eight replacements. And you can see this one up here changed. So if you've misentered something, that's a quick way to replace that data. In our next video, we're going to look at how you can import and export data in Excel.